in the console, just redo the hand raise and so I can see that you guys can hear us. I see one, two, three, four, five. That's a good sign. Okay, that means that folks can hear us and uh, we're about to start. And uh, there we go. Um, my name is Joe Longton, and I'm on the call with Andy Buckle, Eastern Shore Signs, and today we're going to be presenting a webinar, Directed Garment for Sign in Large Format Businesses, which we feel is a perfect fit. Um, the the um, webinar should last approximately 45 minutes, and we're going to have a question and answer session toward the end. And if you have questions while we're talking, please feel free to enter it into the chat window, and it should be visible on your console. Um, and if you want to also see the materials for this webinar, I've already downloaded the PDF into the materials part of the console, so just grab it from right there. So what we're talking about today is the, um, in general, we're going to start off just describing the direct garment industry in general, and then try to get very specific about commercial signage challenges, challenges with large format and digital digital printing. Then we'll go into the Empower and the Sprint Digital Apparel Printers. We actually have three different products at Anajet, um, and we'll talk about a little bit of speeds and feeds. And then we'll move towards economics and talk about the real deal, which is the payoff. Then um, I would like to turn it over to Andy to describe his experience uh, at Eastern Shore Signs and what he's discovered since he added direct garment printing to his business. And then we'll wrap up with explaining and, and trying to be frank about who's really not going to be a f good fit for direct garment So as far as us on the call, I'm the marketing director at Anajet. I've been here since March of 2011, and I actually own an FP125 myself and using it for our home-based business. Andy Buckholtz is owner of Eastern Shore Signs, and he has 25 years of experience in commercial printing in various, with various types of technology. He's a very skilled user and trainer, and he's currently um, an expert with uh, vinyl uh, labeling and, of course, inkjet. And he's owned an Anajet MP5 since February of 2012 and has since upgraded to an Anajet MP10. Why are we? Um, why do we believe in direct garment? Uh, we believe that digital apparel printing is the future. It, with any imaging business, this could be garment decoration, could be awards and engraving, could be an implant uh, facility that's doing offset printing. There are many different imaging businesses out there, and there has been a consolidation in the last few years of about 10 percent. So the recession has actually forced almost 10 percent of uh, printing companies to close down. But the industry is actually faring well. But there's still continuous pricing pressure on all product and service offerings. There's a lot more competition. I'm sure that some of you have seen competition through even websites and online vendors. And uh, it, particularly in these three uh, industries, screen printing, promotional products, and sign in large format, there is a pressure to differentiate or die, which means you need to be able to uh, diversify and really take a, a, a very cold look at what you're doing and whether a given tool is making you money or not. So why do we feel that you should get into digital shirt printing? It's, it's a very large industry. In the United States alone, garment decoration overall is a $44 billion industry. Garment printing specifically, screen printing, and directed garment printing it alone is a $23 billion industry. And that is as of a few years ago. The, the industry has continued to grow. It's very stable. It's, it's very reliable. People are always going to need uh, customized apparel. So as of 2007, it was about 99 to 1 ratio. We believe that that ratio has changed a little bit since then, shifting over towards directed garment. And why is Anajit important? Why are we talking about this? We have been told by a third-party analyst that we have the largest plurality of share in the world for directed garment printers sold, and that we have the, mid, the largest market share of directed garment printers in North America. Um, there are many other competitors out there, um, but we feel that we're we believe that we're driving the, the pack here. So, getting into the imaging industry in general, 
Uh, some of the challenges that you're experiencing is that you do have costly production equipment. It's not cheap to simply go up and go buy uh, a printer and a cutter and um, a, a lot of different various uh, um, uh, treatment machines. And there are um, many processes that uh, you have to bring into your shop to call yourself a full-fledged uh, uh, sign vendor. There are new technologies that uh, occasionally come out and that requires a little bit of a learning curve. Um, lately, there's probably been pressure you may have experienced folks coming to you for smaller jobs um, for, or for shorter run jobs when you're doing multiples. There's always continues to, to market your business and you're always trying to attract new business. And to keep those existing customers, you have to provide a really high degree of customer service. Um, because that's one of the things that they're looking for, not just the cheapest product, but also they're, they're buying you as well. So um, how do you do this? Um, you, 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 do you develop it all in-house? Are you outsourcing? But if you outsource, uh, then you have to contend with lead times. You have to contend with delays, and you have to always work with third parties who may or may not be fulfilling you. Well, that creates a, a bit of a, of a hassle. Um, one of the solutions... Uh, the primary solution that, that we can offer is a, a durable, high-volume digital apparel printer. And what you're seeing in this photo right now, that's actually set up inside of somebody's trailer. Um, they're actually a mobile sign and custom t-shirt shop where they have um, their Empire right next to their VersaCam. Why is this an advantage? Well, because you can attract all types of new business. Um, you're not just uh, driving t-shirt sales. You're, you can drive more sign customers because you're able to sample customers and get their image and their logo, uh, their brand, onto something that's concrete right away. This also enables you to provide pretty fast fulfillment. In fact, you could probably print a lot of shirts on demand when folks are coming in for a short run of five or ten. And it also enables them to have a high degree of personalization. What's that mean? Uh, if you have a customer who wants to um, have variable data, that's something that you can provide very easily. And, and when you, especially when you're doing smaller runs, you can provide uh, uh, um, variable data prints at a very high margin and making profit on each thing that you're printing. And the last one is you're not outsourcing. You can get rid of the middlemen and get rid of ship times and lead times and delays. You also have a lot of control over your costs and some unique advantages. And I'll ask Andy to comment a little bit more on this. Is that one of the things that I've been told by a lot of different sign makers is that hey, it's inkjet technology. I already know how to work with this. I'm, I'm very accustomed to, to doing this. I'm also really skilled with the graphics, uh, manipulating all the different files that customers give to me. It, you know, I've already con contended with a lot of the problems that might fluster a beginner. And I want to be a one-stop shop. I'd like to provide as many services as I can competitively and still be profitable. Uh, the other thing is it doesn't take up a lot of room in my shop. It's not a huge burden on my facility. I don't have to rent out extra space for this. And um, I can also now grow my overall business, not just shirts, not just adding a new, new product line, but growing my sign business because I can sample people constantly. They hear about me through my shirts, and I end up printing signage and, and so forth for them. And I think uh, also, Andy, you experienced a pretty rapid payoff. So maybe you could comment a little bit about this and what you think are some unique advantages that you may have, have seen. Well, yeah, the rapid uh, it definitely had a rapid payoff for me. Um, I'm, I'm actually from a very small town, so the um the, the 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 payoff was relatively quick considering my location it wasn't 3 months it was more like 5 months but the thing that i've taken from the sign side of it i do a bunch of you know traditional uh, aluminum signs dye bomb aluminite whatever you want to call it all these various different signs i being such a small area, I decided to go into the garment thing because all I'm doing is repurposing the data. I do that with, I got product labels I deal with, with coffee vendors, ice cream stores, uh, you name it. I've, there's a bunch of small little retail, so I do all these little custom labels for them, but I uh, repurpose it into signs, repurpose all the data back into the shirts, 
and it's just basically about marketing for them and it's actually a pretty simple thing to do and it works out really well. To do something like that, you're only talking, you know, 30 minutes because you've already got the data already set up from the signs. You might save it as a PNG file versus a, uh, a JPEG. Just it depending upon what color shirt you go on, and that's that's a training thing. Mm -hmm. But overall, it, it, just being able to take that same data and put it on a it's just a different substrate. Yes. I mean, so from, you've been you've from, been able to yeah, function. Coming, you're acting kind of as a as a almost like an, another marketing consultant for these small businesses, giving them another yeah, it's, to promote it's, their business. Correct. Just generally trying to help them out, basically taking and branding themselves. Mm -hmm. um, and you'll see a lot of that across the board, just from anything. It's like with Facebook, you got their personal pages on there. They see the same image. They'll see the same thing on the shirt, same thing on the sign, same thing on the product labels. Um, and it works well. And it's really where a lot of people are going. It's they're trying to get an identity. So, yeah, you know, doing what I've been doing, even even on my car signs, you know, running up through the CNC, I still take the same general data. You know, Illustrator into um, uh, Delacam's art cam. Uh, it's still taking the same data. It's a little different thinking, though. But that, that's a whole other subject. But you, still, you, being able to repurpose the data. Mm -hmm. Did um, on this specific on this point, a question was raised: um, Is it is it really a small footprint? How much space does it take to um, to handle your your direct garment printing operation. Direct to garment uh, footprint. All right, I've got basically three, four. Uh, the, the, I got the printer, two heat presses, and a pretreatment machine. And if you're not familiar with that, uh, that can be talked about later. Yeah. But I'm in a that that takes up literally a ten by ten space, if that. Mm -hmm. I think I actually have a picture of, of uh, if you, if folks, if you go to our blog, you can actually see Andy's shop. I, uh, he sent us a couple of interior shots of it. So um, that it's pretty that small. Question. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm this way. My, my entire shop uh, takes up about 400 square feet. Mm -hmm. And that's with an eight, four by eight foot CNC router, uh, a, a Roland VersaCam 30 inch, a uh, 54 inch laminator. Everything's on wheels, by the way, so I do a lot mm -hmm. of shuffling around. <laughs> um, and then the T-shirt portion of it, uh, the M5, which I'm upgrading to the 10, two heat presses, and a Viper One, which is a pre-treat for the dark shirts mm -hmm. for the white underbase, mm -hmm. and a little so small heat press that sits underneath of it. There's a minimal amount of investment that you make on top of a direct garment printer in order to have a fully functioning uh, business line. Yes, you don't have to go to the volume. When I just did it because of the volume, I uh, the in volume. Yeah, I had no idea what my volume was going to be, and I was pleasantly surprised by the amount of shirts that I've done in March. It's kind of mind-boggling, considering <laughs> I'm in poorest county in the state of Virginia and uh, the probably least populated county. But there's a lot of uh, uh, businesses here that do. Uh, deal with the hospitality or vacation rentals and stuff like that. So okay. restaurants, municipalities, you name it. Good. We're going to get into that a little bit more when we get to it. We're going to have an a actual um, full case study slide there in a little bit. So uh, getting back to the, the, the printer itself, the technology, uh, to ask the question, you know, what, what's the real result? Um, well, you get full color prints um, on a shirt, and you don't have the, the sticky feeling of uh, uh, screen printed ink. It's not gummy. It actually is water-based, and it becomes part of the garment when you cure it. It has really good resistance and, and lifetime. It should actually last for the life of the garment. We don't say 60 washes, 40 washes, 50 washes, because it really does depend on how well your customer takes care of it. So you want to tell them to wash a custom printed garment cold water, just as you would with any other uh, special garment. And that increases the longevity of the shirt. And as you can see right here, this is a, um, a full color shirt printed on the Empower MP5. The uh, actual story behind this is a fellow had an order for 250 shirts. He charged 13 bucks a piece. 
his net profit in five hours was twenty-seven ninety. So that was a good day for Chuck. <laughs> He's one of our, um, our member of our customer advisory board as well, Andy. So let me tell you a little bit. We're going to talk about two different printer lines. One is the Empower. This one, uh, we we claimed it to be the fastest direct garment printer. It also produces very good quality prints. We provide the unparalleled technical support and training. Uh, nobody else in the direct garment industry does what, what we can do as far as taking care of our customers. There are many things that you can do in, in addition to, um, to, to shirts. And mostly promotional products distributors take advantage of the extended media and the foil capabilities, doing art prints and printing on uh, different substrates besides just garments. What's special about this Empower is that it has a closed loop recirculating ink delivery system. How important is that? Well, if you understand how ink chip printers work, you know that uh, um, low humidity is an enemy of, uh, uh, of the print head. And that's why we have uh, airtight ink cartridges and recirculating ink, which reduces the, the drying out and the clogging that can occur, specifically with uh, titanium dioxide white ink. And the recirculation also helps to reduce the settling uh, of the white ink in the line. You also get better ink flow results, which means uh, fewer head cleans, easier maintenance. Of course, there's maintenance with our printers. There's always going to be a daily amount of maintenance, weekly and monthly. And if you take that in stride already with your existing equipment, this is not a significant burden that to be added to that. It also gives you better control of ink flow better saturation, and that reduces your spillage. Something else that's special about the Empower is that we had developed our own RIP software for it. It's proprietary RIP, and we actually innovated a couple of new features, one of which is a patent-pending TrueView feature. If you look on the screen, you can see that I have an image with a grid, but on the right side is what we call the TrueView, which is here's how the print is going to be. It's a reasonable facsimile of how the print's going to actually appear on a printed dark shirt. Why is this important? Well, because folks have, may have unrealistic expectations about what they're going to get. If, you know, if you've been working with graphics and customers for a long time, you know that garbage in equals garbage out. So if your customers are giving you poor resolution graphics, or if, it's, if it's, uh, they haven't uh, given you something with uh, um, transparency and they're expecting transparency, uh, or a, a variety of things they may ex be expecting, identical results to what they see on screen. This actually shows you, here's what it's going to look like when that ink has been uh, applied to the garment, it's adhered, and part of it has, has uh, soaked into the, the fibers of the garment. So you can actually go in and adjust the colors and adjust the white underbase to bring up the brightness or lower the brightness to the desired effect. Um, something special about us is that we also provide lifetime updates to our firmware and to our RIP software. You can, there's an LCD preview. This is directly on the face of the printer, and this gives you a job selection preview screen to see the, the thing you're about to print. And here's the speeds and feeds. We actually had uh, SGIA visit our facility last January, came out and tested, and said that our we could do a white print at uh, in production mode in 13 seconds. Well, we were a little more conservative. It's actually 16 seconds for that graphic uh, because we measure from the time you push print. Black garment came out in 40 seconds, 48 seconds. Why it take longer? It takes two passes. With dark garments, you need to have white ink laid down on top of a pre-treated pre garment. That way, the color layer, the CMYK that you put on top of that will actually show up. Um, so what does this mean? Well, you could have a, a reasonable output of 100,000 to 200,000 garments in one year. Uh, Andy, I don't know what kind of experience you've had. I, I, I think that you've had uh, with the MP5 that you have had times where you could jam out 50. It basically, the slide will show, basically did 50 shirts and about, it was just a hair over an hour. Mm -hmm. And that was because of Right, right. So, so 
I've actually heard that from a, a couple people that they need two heat presses if they're going to actually uh, be running production because the um, the pressure is going too fast for the press. <laughs> so. Yeah, that's a good. I mean, it's a good problem because you know it's all about production. Production. You know, the more you get out per hour, the more you're going to make. Pretty yeah. pretty cut dry. Hey, I got a good question from uh, an audience member. What's what's the maintenance compared to the Roland Versicam like? <laughs> it's actually pretty similar. There's just a little bit more um, involved. You know, basically with the Versacam, it's you have to you know take off the covers, send it over. It's essentially the same thing. You're lifting up the covers. You're essentially doing a very similar maintenance. Um, my experience it, it, with the uh, M, the M Power, it might take maybe five minutes more than the Versacam. There's just a few more things on on this printer that you deal with. But you're still cleaning the wiper blade. You're still cleaning around the print heads. Um, this, on the M-Series, you've got a cleaning station where it actually resides. You have to clean that. It's an extra piece. You have it on the VersaCam, but it's not nearly the same. It's, it's more robust than the VersaCam. Um, so just a couple more pieces, but essentially it's almost identical. You know, you're, using the same, you're using the same uh, swab um, a similar cleaning solution. And that, matter of fact, I use I use a different cleaning solution than the Anajets on mine, and it, and it works fine. And I, I'm using basically something that I've used on the Roland. Mm -hmm. Cool. Well, the 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 um, there was another question about print size limitations on the shirt, and I can answer that one with, with the M Power. The the table is 14 inches by 18 inches. Um, that does not preclude you from doing an all-over print. It's just going to take you mul um, multiple passes to do an all-over print on a shirt. We find that that's a, a pretty large uh, print that serves 99% um, of the purposes out there. In fact, the Sprint, which is one that, the slide that you folks are looking at right now, actually has a smaller platen. It's 12 and a half inches by 16. Uh, and this has served us and been upselling direct armor printer in the United States for the last couple of years. And we have had a lot of people build their entire business upon just this this directing armor printer. Um, this was first released back in June of 2009, and we're on the second generation of the Sprint. This is what we would call our entry-level printer, and it is very reliable. Um, and assuming that you do take care of it with routine maintenance, this is also light. It's uh, 84 pounds, which means you can transport this, be pretty portable, and be a mobile sign shop if you want to, a mobile T-shirt printer if you like, and it is uh, has delivered very fast ROI for a lot of our customers. Some have seen ROI of five months, some have seen just a few weeks. We do have one customer who knew nothing about directing armor printing, knew nothing about the imaging industry. It was a retail clothing store, picked up one of these, and it was paid for within about five months. And after just short of two years now. He has cleared over $350,000 in income in, in gross receipts just from just from the one printer. So what's a little different about the Sprint, it is not as fast as the Empower, but you can still get uh, very fast performance. A white shirt could take between about a minute to three minutes, and a black shirt with two passes can take between two and six minutes. You're still being able. You're still able to do a very high output. Again, these times are not ours. These are come from a, an SGIA digital equipment evaluation. So if you folks know SGIA and you trust them, um, then you can go by these times. And if you happen to be a member, you can actually log in and see our equipment evaluation. So the business case. Um, I'm going to say that this. These numbers really come from a, a, a wide swath of customers, from folks who are in the embroidery industry, sign industry, promotional products, retail. This is what they're telling me, is that the fully loaded cost of a printed white shirt, that's including your labor, that's including uh, um, um, virtually all the steps involved in getting that shirt printed and, and packaged. Between 250 and 350, um, the prices can, can vary. The retail price, which I have taken actually from several customers is that they're retailing at between 13 and 18. Now, of course, you're going to probably have a lot of wholesale customers. That's okay. You're still going to have uh, incredible margins resulting from that, but your 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 pricing is going to be adjusted in the six to nine to twelve dollar range. 
as opposed to 13 to 18 and up. So overall, assuming a gross profit of $12 per shirt, you pay off a sprint in about 1,500 prints, an MP5 in about 2,200 shirts. In Yeah, mine was a little higher because I deal pretty much mostly dealing with wholesale accounts, and also next next to Virginia Beach, right. which is the 17th largest city in the United States, and there's a lot of screen printers over there. So I end up dealing with that. But so you're actually you're actually you're coping quite well with competition, though. Yeah, no problem at all. They like a lot of people around here like to buy local, which is uh, which is a good thing. Awesome. Um, I'm actually an isolated, we're isolated peninsula on the eastern seaboard. <laughs> <laughs> you almost have a captive market then. <laughs> <laughs> kind of. Uh, no, almost. Almost. There's an, I actually have a director of a competitor up uh, not far from me. Ah, just found okay. out. All right. Well, I'm, still um, his, I'm still eating his lunch, though. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, the other things that you can do, um, I don't think Andy's ventured into these areas yet, but um, there's also the capability of extended media where we provide a, uh, a, a pre-treatment and a print in a, in a sealant solution. And you can actually print on glass and wood and metal. Uh, there's also the capability of doing metal foil, which is a very, very, very popular uh, um, sweetener for um, raising your prices on direct garment prints. Um, the folks love to have foil to their shirts. There's also art prints, which is um, putting, we can actually print very nicely up to uh, 1200 DPI um, onto uh, a canvas. And I remember you talking, you, Jerry, you remember you're talking to a bunch of guys that have wide format. They've got canvas prints on their, on their wide formats. But, 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 but this is, the, the capability here is to take it mobile. You can actually go out True. and do this if you wanted to. I, 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 I agree that that's not going to be a big seller with, no, with somebody who's got wide format. Not with these guys. It's too, yeah. too small. <laughs> <laughs> so that was just one of some other extra things that we have. Um, who are the markets? We think that the, the markets that you guys serve um, are going to be very much the same, uh, garment printing. Uh, customers uh, that garment decorators serve. The ones that I highlighted are ones that are most commonly cited as as uh, both as common to both industries. You have your schools, higher education, uh, larger corporations, nonprofits, uh, and athletic teams. Um, there's Healthcare. a million different kids teams out there that that, that I actually take care of myself. Uh, does this, do you disagree with your experience? Yeah, you can add both uh, hospitality service and healthcare. That's a big thing because I got a lot of, you know, ha um, rehab places around here for, um, you name it, from, uh, you know, per injuries to, uh, you know, just old older people and stuff. So I got a lot of little divisions of healthcare around here, and they love to buy shirts and put their information on their little sayings and stuff. It works. I mean, I get, you know, forty or fifty shirts a month from one guy, and it's mm -hmm. simple stuff. Mm -hmm. That's good. So uh, let's talk a little about about you, um, your buckles. <laughs> <laughs> Printing nineteen eighty nine uh, and uh, one thing, uh, labels, raw vinyl cutting. You had an MP five, upgraded it to a ten and uh, churned out 5,600 garments since March 2012 on the MP5. And the thing that's remarkable is that you tell us that you saw an overnight jump in, in business of about 35% once you got the yeah, printer. Yeah, it was, it was pretty radical, actually. Um, basically, what I was taking, in, and it goes along the same line, everybody knows what commercial printing, basically commercial printing is getting pounded. And I used to be in it for 20-some years, and I ended up getting out of it and going into, to me, I'm a graphic person by trade, basically a pre-press person. So I already knew how to deal with all this stuff, and I was doing a bunch of car science, so I decided to get into the uh, vinyl portion of it.
the county is only 12,000 people, I had to look beyond just that particular market. So I went into the direct environment. I read a lot about it, did enough research on it, and I ended up going to Anajet just for the sole reason these guys were in the forefront of um, of the direct environment. So something you know had to have been going right for them to have that kind of market share. So I went with them, and I went with the M5 just because of the you know. I didn't know where it was going to go. Well, lo and behold, you guys know what it's like to do production, and you've got so many hours in the day to pump out stuff. Well, the M5 has been great, but for me, being a one-man shop, I usually have about three or four things going on at once, just juggling everything. But in order for me to crank out 100 shirts and do a bunch of my sign stuff, I need to reduce the amount of time it takes me to generate a shirt. Thus, my profits will be higher because um, in the next slide, you'll see what's going on. I, I took a job from a screen printer and mm -hmm. at a really low price, and I was still making 120 bucks an hour. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it's just, and that, was on, that, and that was on the 5. That wasn't even on the 10. It probably would have been a lot higher because it probably could have done it in half the time with the 10. So... It's speed for me right now is the quality is the same. The quality is awesome. In that previous slide, there was a shirt I did with the big sunset on it. That 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 a lot of these stuff, a lot of the shirts that I've done are kind of graphics like that. And then I've had a lot of simple graphics, but the the whole the whole thing is is just production. For me, it was now it's about production. I've got a about a hundred. 200 customer base, a ton of repeat business. Um, I sell it to them at a fair price. They got the example of 1055. Um, that basically is equivalent to an eight color job. And I'm competing against screen printers across the bay that are charging nine to 10 bucks for that mm -hmm. same job. Mm -hmm. So they're willing to pay, one, they like the shirt better. It's the same shirt, but they like the print feeling better. Doesn't have that heavy plastisol, plastic gummy or raised um, type, um, ink on it. It's more embedded in the shirt, or very, 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 very delicate feeling. But it's not. It, it lasts longer, and it doesn't pull apart like a screen printing job either. Mm -hmm. So that's basically how I've been. Uh, doing this and it's competition for me yeah there's a little competition I got competition up the road which is you know, 54, 40 miles for here is nothing it's a drop in a bucket you're doing that all the time mm -hmm. but there's one company up the road that's uh, offering direct garment not on location in their other shop up in Maryland and I'm still being able to um, basically I don't know who they have uh, whoever they have has probably got more expensive ink so um, I'm able to keep my costs and my margins where I want them. Was the ink cost something that you were actually considered as a factor? Yeah, big Why time. Why that? Uh, I looked at I looked at Brother. They got a great machine, but the amount of the, the, the cost difference in the ink. When you start looking at the amount of shirts, like for me, 5,600 shirts, and their ink cost is that much higher than Anadets. I, I, it was a simple, simple math. It really was. It was super simple math. Mm -hmm. To one, sell a shirt. Either I'm going to have to raise the price of the shirt, plus being not competitive, or keep my competitive edge with the lower cost inks. Um, I, I, it was a simple thing for me to figure out. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's the same thing with the machine too. Is a new machine. I know the uh, the graffiti's just come just come out. Right. I, I don't you, know enough you, about it. I don't think it's uh, shipped yet, but um, I, I I hear I heard that it has not shipped yet. Uh, are you aware, aware of anybody that has actually? Um, no, I've, I've, no, I don't know anybody has one. But I just know that doing reading, it's like seven dollars in ink to clean it, and that's the cleaning. Where this with a closed loop with a closed loop system, that that's pretty big because especially with the white, 
actually circulates it all the way around. There's actually two sets of lines. You got one in, and then there's one on the back side called the purge side. And every hour, if you're not using it, it's actually cycling the ink through. I don't know how many of you guys have the white ink from uh, the Versicams, um, but I'm, I'm almost sure they got the same sort of deal on there to keep that titanium dioxide from gelling up. Um, well, it's the very, other thing is that very, very similar. The other thing is that self-maintenance where it does this, it, it'll just do a micro burst of ink once every hour. Yeah, it's it's like about a penny of ink. Yeah, it's not that much. I think in a 24-hour period, it was like a quarter, right. which is about a penny an, a penny an hour. Right. So it doesn't waste a lot of ink. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. No, I mean, if you, if you actually go back and look how much ink I've, I've, I've bought, you know, I got, you know, with my deal, when I got, I got a free set of inks with it. But 5,600 shirts, you can see I don't use a lot of ink. I go through about uh, a set of cartridges, Two sets a month, and these are two twenties, not the big four forties that you're nice. You can nicely get with the Versa cams. Mm -hmm. um, so that's basically going through a one one to two a month mm -hmm. out of fifty six hundred shirts. That's not a lot of ink usage. Mm -hmm. So, and I found with mine with the ink costing. Um, part on the on the on the rip that actually kind of gives you an idea of what it's going to cost mm -hmm. most of my prints of the most expensive print I print was that one with the RT nautical on it the yellow one that was like a, a, a dollar ninety oh yeah let me go back up to that one I like that shirt too that was about a dollar ninety to print the shirt was 229 there it is um, and then at the pre-treat was probably about you know 25 to 30 cents of pre-treat so, so, so that, that's important to point out, though, that this is, you took a photo of the actual shirt. This is not the image that you just uh, um, uh, no, get a trapezoid. Um, this is the actual shirt? Yeah. All the, <laughs> the, the bag, um, the coffee one, that's a shirt. Uh -huh. And then a fishing tournament, that's another shirt. And then the art rendition from a little old lady in town that does art and prints them on, has me print them on shirts. Yeah, um, I actually had a customer who, who um, they were they were skittish because they said we're we're so used to just doing a two color screen print, um, we, we got no use for you. And then I said, well, how many sponsors do you have? And they said we've got about thirty sponsors. I said, how would you like to get all thirty of those sponsors in full color on the back of the shirt? Yeah. <laughs> and so they said, okay, well, maybe your sponsors would be willing to pony up a few a few cents extra um, well, just to get their brand on the shirt. All right, here's the, I mean, the story about that 2000, that black drum shirt, uh -huh. that, I, I sold that to them, basically said, hey, you can do this, this, and this, and it's not going to cost you any more than you spent last year on your one color, colored shirt you, you got. I said, you mm -hmm. can do this thing at four color, you get all the color graphics. That shirt right there has got me more business than any other job. Mm -hmm. And not only did I get the signs banners and the yard signs and um, some, uh, some some labels out of that shirt. I've gotten more business from um, a lot of the people you see on that shirt. Matter of fact, there's one down the corner you really can't make it out. It's called Chris Bait and Tackle. Mm -hmm. I just got a call from them. They want me to do all their product labels, and they go through, I forget what she said, about uh, two or 3,000 shirts a year. Mm -hmm. So right there, that will be by far my biggest account when it comes to direct to garments. That's being awesome. able to crank out you know, 100 to 200 shirts a month. Just because you're able to get their logo rendered on a shirt. Yeah. <laughs> Not having you know. Uh, well, there's no setup fee for the. There's no screen. The ink on that one was, uh, I don't even go high at 50 cents. I don't even think it was that much. Yeah. Uh, so you're looking at $2 of cost. My time, I don't really equate my time because I look at the the profit is my payment. So right. I'm making, I, was, I made $8 for every shirt I did, and I did almost 100 shirts. So I literally made $1,000 <clears> on a shirt that literally took me, um, Four hours to do. That's, that's beautiful. So it's like 200, 200 bucks an hour. 
That's beautiful. I, I just I do my I do my pricing way different than a lot of people, especially in the science side. I don't, I don't know how many guys out there, but basically I have a, a estimate I use is a science estimating software. Mm -hmm. I mean, I almost use the same thing. It's a product label. You market up the the product a hundred percent. You make sure you got your ink cost covered in there, mm -hmm. and then. You know all the other stuff that comes by your hourly chart. I mean your hourly rate. You can actually figure out how to price them based on your sign shots hourly rate. Mine happens to be sixty bucks an hour. I'm on the smaller side. I know there's some sign shops out there that are down as low as forty, but then there's all the ones, the big guys, you know, one hundred twenty to two hundred dollars an hour on those mm -hmm. some of those sign shops. It really depends on what your overhead is. Right, right, and if it, it also helps if you're able to, you know, if you have the basics for accounting for your business and you you understand how to how to price profitably. I, I actually, um, not to jump in too much here, but we do have a webinar coming up in a couple of weeks that's going to be about profitable pricing models. Um, so yeah, I re recommend that to anybody who is not sure. You know, they, they're looking at this industry and they're saying, yeah, but how do I price for this? This is a completely different type of product that I'm selling. Same same theory though. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's all about material and ink. Mm -hmm. uh, if you got if you got employees and you're talking labor, you got to figure out how many shows you can do an hour mm -hmm. realistically. Um, mm -hmm. You know, because there's you know no one's perfect, and you know, there's always mishaps. I make mistakes all the time, so my hourly rate, you know, is based on what my overhead is now, and then. And that's basically sixty dollars an hour. So yeah. I'm actually making more than that when I do these shirts. Yeah. Let me let me uh, say one more thing. I want to invite everybody. If you have questions, to please put them into the chat window. And uh, after the, after we get through this, uh, then we're going to go over to Q and A. So what we thought was important is to point out who's not a fit for directed garment. It's not going to be perfect. It's not going to work for everybody. Um, and um, I've, I've chatted about this with Andy and uh, with a couple of other folks in the sign industry, and some folks who are in a franchise operation. Um, and there are conditions that are not ideal for you to get a dirty garment printer. Uh, if you're just getting started in the imaging business and you just bought bought into a franchise, that might be a situation where you want to wait and see. If you're not really comfortable working with graphic software and modifying the graphics, improving the the cruddy JPEGs that some customers provide for you or the, the lousy scans or the picture off their phone that they want you to print out. It's always the same principle. If you put garbage into RIP, you're going to get garbage out of it. Um, some folks out there have a franchise and they're locked into using some other direct to garment printer. Um, that's completely understandable and they're, they're, they're quite happy with the machine that they've got. On the other hand, you might be better to upgrade to something that enables you to print white ink. Um, that's been Probably the top reason why folks have switched from other printer manufacturers to Anajet was because they said, I have just have too many people coming to me with black shirts. That's where the business is. That's where the money is. And I can charge people a premium of another four bucks per piece for these things. Um, if I don't want to say afraid of investing in, but if you're not comfortable using inkjet technology, you're, you're doing something that's around in boards and engraving that it doesn't really have any, you don't really have any inkjet equipment in your in your shop, you're not comfortable with it, um, you had issues with it in the past, it's not going to work for you. If you hate performing maintenance, <laughs> if you don't like once a day cracking open your machine or doing, doing a, a nozzle check, doing a head clean, and then once a week uh, doing some minor maintenance, once a month doing some minor maintenance, it's not going to be a good fit for you. You do have to take care of this. Um, Andy, tell me if this is rings true for you. I, I heard an analogy. A uh, person says, well, I'm buying one of the, these printers, this MP10, and it's the price of a new Lexus. I said, well, you're comparing uh, the Lexus to um, our printer. You should actually be comparing um, our printer to a million-dollar race car because a Lexus isn't going to make you any money. Um, <laughs> a paper printer is to an Anajet as a Lexus is to uh, an Indy car. It, it takes maintenance, it takes care, it takes people um, opening the lid once in a while to make sure it's tuned up properly and running. And if you do that and you do it well and you use it properly, it's going to make you a ton of money. If you don't, it's going to be a boat acre. <laughs> so 
So we have to point that out sometimes, and um, I think that well, analogy works these, better. I think a lot of these guys, if they got wide format, if they have any of the uh, Roland's, um, my 30-inch one I got, uh, I got as a demo model, so it was right around 10, 11 grand. Um, and it's produce, it makes me money. I mean, anything you look at, I mean, it's kind of hard to, that, the analogy comparing it to a car or a Lexus. So the Lexus is definitely not going to make any money. Right. But, you know, the M5, it's paid for already, and I also paid for the upgrade cash because I've already paid, I paid for the 10 before I even got the 10. Mm -hmm. So, but I wanted that production speed because I'm growing and I need, I need the speed. That's just mm -hmm. me. Mm -hmm. So, yep. The less time you spend on running the printer, the more you can do on profitable tasks. Um, then the last thing, the last thing I'd say, if your primary strategy to grow your business is to just outprice your competitors, um, you, you're not going to make a, enough money on this. If you just, if you're just buying this to give away shirts um, or to try to beat the screen printers every time, um, I don't think that's been the case for you, Andy. I think that you've been. Um, no, I've only competed I'll walk with them head to head a couple times. No, I'll walk away from them. Right. No sense. There's, there's, it's crazy. Yeah. Uh, with the one, one color shirt, it's not even worth it. Right. Right. But if you don't fit any of these conditions, and then you should buy an antidote right now. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, I want to open this up to some more questions here, and um, let me answer the first one that popped up was. Um, I hear a lot of uh, bad things out there in social media. Um, why should I consider upgrading this? Um, Andy, what's your take on that? Wait, what do you mean upgrading? Upgrading from a Sprint to an Empower or upgrading from an MP5 to an MP10? Um, or... Well, put it this way. Uh, mine has been running pretty well. If I had problems, sure. It's a, a brand new built from the ground up device. Mm -hmm. It's not like it's the it's the first generation, so there have been you know some minor things that have happened to mine. The mm -hmm. support's been great. I got the part the next day, and I haven't been down. I was never down a long period of time ever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but I mean, the support was the the great great thing to me. And if you yeah. had the sprint, you should. I mean, the, whoever wrote that should know that. I mean, you should be getting some good support. Right. Um, but you also got to take some of this with a grain of salt too. And these guys going out there, you know, it's like you guys don't know me from Adam, and these people are posting stuff. But uh, I always take that with a grain of salt because in this business of graphics, and if you don't understand it thoroughly, regardless of where you're going on a wide format printer, mm -hmm. um, CNC router, whatever, if you don't know it, you're, it's only going to be as good as what you tell the machine to do. One of the, somebody told me this at a trade show. Is that he says um, busy, success, busy, successful people don't have a lot of time to wind. And it was a fluke, a mm -hmm. fluke incident. It broke, and I called. I'm on the East Coast. You guys are on the West Coast. Mm -hmm. I called there seven o'clock my time, which would have made it four o'clock or so your time. Mm -hmm. um, they knew that I had a big production job, and my sales rep got in his car, took the part down to FedEx, even though FedEx had already been to his place, picked it up. He was able to get it in, and I was able to get it the next day, and really didn't lose a beat. Awesome. So that that was awesome, and there was someone going out of the way to make sure that whatever happened was corrected. I'd like to think that all of our technical support folks and, and uh, sales folks are are, are that committed. Um, it's, it's it's not often you find a case, um, you know, that service provider. Continues to you know once you have once you've bought something from a vendor that continue to provide that real service, um, we we take a lot of pride in that. So I'm glad that that happened for you. 
Um, I had another question come in about uh, the warranty. Um, the machine warranty on, on all of our printers, I believe, is one year um, parts and um, a one year labor. And I think it's we split the shipping. I'm not entirely sure on that. But the best person to ask that would be original manager. I also know that we do um, lifetime updates for the store and the firmware. So if there's improvements um, uh, or upgrades made, From RIP one to RIP two. Oh, yeah, the, the RIP two dot It's amazing. Big. Yeah. The the um, what's the best part of that for you? Well, me is being able to uh, adjust the colors on the white underbase. In other words, if the white underbase. If you guys just to give you some a, a ten thousand foot overview, it, it content based white ink. In other words, it just doesn't put a big sheet of white down and then you print on it. It puts it based on like a uh, a half tone. Mm -hmm. So certain colors, i.e. red, need to have more white put down. So I can actually go in and isolate just that portion of that color field and say I need to have 60% more white under this beat. And that's where the true through the, the view, true view uh, option comes in. You can actually see what's actually happening. And it's actually pretty darn close. Um, so you're able to cranking up your white under the red but not affect anywhere else which keeps your white ink cost down. If you did not do content based, some of these prints would cost four or five, maybe six bucks. And I, I don't use just I use content based, but that made a world of difference being able mm -hmm. to adjust the color. Mm -hmm. uh, even at even that photo you were showing with the blue uh, wings, you can crank up the white on that and get the blue bluer. Mm -hmm. So. Let me invite everybody to, to um, sorry, Andy. let me invite everybody, to, again, we're, we're in Q&A. If you have a question, just pop it into the chat window. I've got another good one here. Um, are inks refillable? Uh, no, the inks are not refillable. We're not doing bulk inks. These are sealed cartridges. Um, what's the procedure when you're finished printing and you don't print on a daily basis? You're going to want to flush it with cleaning fluid uh, if you're not printing on a daily basis. But, Andy, um, you don't print every which, single day. No, right. which version? The sprint, yeah, if you don't, the sprint's basically because it's not a, 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 a closed a closed loop system. Mm -hmm. um, the sprint, if you don't print for like three or four, uh, what is it, three or four days, you're supposed to take the ink out and put cleaning solution in. Mm -hmm. I've never mm -hmm. put cleaning solution in the machine until it's being ready to be shipped back tomorrow because my M10 comes tomorrow. So that's the only time I've ever put cleaning solution in it. Mm -hmm. um, basically, with the auto circ on the 10, basically it circulates all the inks, so they're constantly moving and it's spitting it out. You so can leave it. You can leave it for a few days it, and not worry about it. Yeah, you can leave it alone. I mean, you can leave it. I, well, I quite honestly, I haven't done it yet, but um, <laughs> I think the longest I've gone is probably three or four days, and yeah. I haven't had a problem. Well, you want, and then when you come back, you're going to want to do. You're going to want to do a head clean one, and uh, it should be good to go. Yeah, I've had it a long weekend, and, yeah. and I came back in, you know, level one, level two, and yep. is ready to go. So how the many ink printers? Is, this, oh, go ahead. I was go ahead. I was gonna say one thing for these guys. The ink is slightly different than like the uh, solvent-based stuff that you get on these wide format uh, um, vinyl printers. This is slightly it's textile ink, so it's it's when air hits it, it tends to uh, dry up much faster than the um, wide format. Um, vinyl printers. So mm -hmm. that's why there's this closed loop system and that's why it fires every hour. Uh, occasionally you hear your verse account, at least mine, goes off every couple hours and does this, essentially the same thing. Mm -hmm. But it, it just doesn't have a, it doesn't have a research because I don't have the white version or the silver version. I just have the CYMJ. So I got another question here. How many employees do you have running the printer or do you do it yourself? Uh, when I'm really busy, I got I, a person in here. I set up set up the job, and there's basically load the shirt, hit the green button, and take it off, put it in the heat press. So occasionally, I have to hire a part time person. Um, but there's not a big learning I'm, curve for him. No, no, not at all. It's basically, you know, <laughs> I, I basically well, it, was, it was kind of funny. I said, "Look, all you have to do is load the shirt." He he did screen printing before. I said, "Push the green button," but don't. I said, "Don't be." There's not going to be a banana that comes out of the bottom as a prize. 
right. it's really simple. It's simple. <laughs> I mean, it's not to sound, I mean, you don't want to sound like a jackass, but it's that simple. You put okay. a shirt on, you push a green button. And if you guys control your graphics, you can even put it on a flash card, and, and it can be in a totally different room. You can have a flash card with a job jacket saying, I need 20 shirts with this color, uh, this file on this color shirt, and go. It's right. really simple. It's right. not hard at all. Right. So have you ever run cleaning solution through, uh, did you ever run cleaning solution through the MP5? Did you have to do flush fills or anything like that? Nope. Nope. Okay. Never. Wow. You kept it busy then. Um, yeah. It was... So how, 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 my, how just, go ahead. Go ahead. My, my, I was going to say my average shirt is 50 shirts. I think it's, well, no, it's probably 40 shirts a day, something like that. That's the average. Mm -hmm. That's a good time. average. I'd like to be at that average. Yeah. <laughs> um, how accurate is the color matching? Um, I had a question. We have a, I get this question a lot. Folks want to get hit PMS colors, and, and we don't uh, do spot yeah. PMS colors like that. You can't do spot PMS on anything CYMK because the colors – the color field of a CYMK is not nearly as great as some of these PMS colors. Reflex blue, you cannot achieve. Yeah. You cannot achieve some of these purples. It's just, it's, it's the nature of the beast. Now, I brought this up in the customer advisory board. I mean, you're looking at a garment, which is fabric. Mm -hmm. uh, you've got so many different colors. The color fidelity, you're not going to match anything perfectly on a PMS. Um, and then the only other way you can get, if you're, you're that critical on color matching, you can run out charts on a shirt that's similar to, like, you want to make it say it's the same brand, you know, because each one of these brands have different different color white yep. Uh, yep. look to them. Definitely. You've got different color shirts. You've got all mm -hmm. sorts of different variables on this stuff. And I have yet to have one person complain about a shirt that, did not look good. I mean, it's a look thing. You're not gonna, you're not gonna match. You'll get close to the company logo, mm -hmm. but it's not gonna be the same shade because DMS. There's no way. I've been doing mm -hmm. this a long time. I even had the same problem in commercial printing, doing CYMK conversions of P PMSs. It was impossible. Right. And the, and the color, and the color fidelity, or the color gamut on a T-shirt is not even near what it could be done in commercial printing. It's no, a lot it, smaller. We try to point this out too to folks when we're at seminars. It's like you, you don't you have to understand that when you're looking at an image on a screen, you've got some you've got a, basically a backlit um, thing with with RGB color. When you're looking at a shirt, you're looking at a, a, a garment that's not backlit. That actually the light is not refracting from behind at all, and you're looking at CMYK colors. And it's it's you're never going to have a um, hundred percent um, like for like. But to the human eye, often you can't tell the difference, um, and that's been my experience. And folks are pretty customers have always been yeah. pretty happy with with the results. Yeah, I just I just happen to notice the color the color gamut is not nearly as great on a T-shirt no, as it is on not. paper or vinyl. It's just but not I will I will say that that if you go on to the SGIAs and check out SGIAs digital equipment evaluations, they actually do a color gamut test, and you can actually see that we have a, a pretty uh, strong um, Quality. Good question yes. about. Can you explain the pretreatment process? Is it toxic? Do you need open space, or can it be done indoors? Um, um, I'll say you, you, you can are. do it indoors as long as you have good ventilation for for uh, like a pretreatment booth or a box that you're spraying into. Generally, you want to do it outside, but there are um, there is a way that you can set up like a box, for example, and uh, you wear a mask, and um, it's it's. It's, it's very safe. I have I have people pre-treating constantly indoors. As a matter of fact, and and we even own uh, we own a Viper uh, pre-treatment machine here. So since we do such high volume, we use the Viper because it's very consistent. Um, yeah, you if you're the doing Viper too, right? Yeah, if you're doing high volume, it's it's a bigger it's a bit it's another expense, but it's well worth it because you can it, you get great results. You can do it inside. It's in a closed unit. I've got the Viper One, which is pneumatic. It's all air controlled. There's no electricity except for the compressor, which is, you know, a small little compressor. It fires at uh, 40, no, 70 psi. 
Mm -hmm. So, and it's constant results, same exact amount of uh, pre-treatment goes down, not a lot of waste. As a matter of fact, you even recoup some that you can basically run through a strainer. I learned that the hard way. Uh, to get any of the uh, fibers from the shirt that have blown off into the side. Mm -hmm. So it can be, you can reclaim the overspray. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow, that's good. Uh, um, that's good to know. Uh, I haven't well, worked with enough keep, myself to know it. Yeah. Um, some questions that people are asking, a lot of people asking about the Viper. We don't sell the Viper. Um, we're not distributors for it, folks. It's a company called iGroup. And uh, if you go on the web and search iGroup, uh, Viper One, and, uh, they're um, they're like Anajet, yeah. Basically, they Brian, pretty much Brian own them. They own the market pretty yeah. much. It's a definitely. it's definitely uh, worth it's definitely worth the I, my 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 feeling is definitely worth the expense if you're doing a lot of dark shirts. Mm -hmm. I couldn't do what I was doing if I didn't have it. Another good question was: Can you print different blends of t-shirt fabrics, or is it just 100 percent cotton? Um, she's saying uh, done, it's just bamboo uh, or I've nylon. Done, I've done 50-50, and they do have another another pre-treat that's uh, uh, what is that called? Poly primer. Yeah, yeah, it works, yeah. and it's basically you pre-treat it so the ink will attach to the shirt and the poly fibers. Mm -hmm. okay. and it works well. All right. Um, I'm trying to see if there's anything else in here. Um, and on that poly bright, you can only do if you're doing uh, like spandex. It can only be light spandex. Because you can't put titanium dioxide. Not on, yeah, not on dark, not on dark shirts, not on dark polymer. And that's good. Good point. Saying yet, because it's a chemical. You guys will figure it out. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think that that's. I had one question. Uh, this is the last one. Was uh, please please describe the three D process a little more. That's it's not three D printing, folks. Uh, it is just a. Um, an image that when you, if you have the special 3D glasses, it actually will, will appear to be three-dimensional um, because of the way that you've applied the ink um, and the, the colors that you're using. Uh, so if you if you if you learn the technique, you come to Anajet University, you, you you could actually learn how to convert certain illustrations into a 3D effect. But it is not 3D printing per se, like a little model. So. Um, that's going to wrap it up for us. We, we've exceeded an hour, and I wanted to thank everybody for joining this call, um, and especially um, our uh, speaker today, Mr. Buckholtz, Andy, of Eastern Shore Signs. Um, thank you very much. And folks, please don't hesitate to give us a call or email us um, with, future qu with other questions that you may have. And Andy, I bid you good day. Thanks. All right, thank you. Bye-bye.